Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good. Guess it would help if I mute Twitch. Let me go and get the game started here. And give me just a couple minutes to get everything posted around that the stream is live and then we'll get started. How's everybody doing today? Everybody having a good weekend so far? Let me post this over on the matrix forms, guys, and we will be all set to go. Hi, Pixel. <clears throat> Unknown, welcome. The goal for today is to not lose a carrier. Pixel, I am going to be playing Duelist today. <clears throat> so it's going to be, I believe it's the UK versus the Soviets. Up in the, I believe it's the Bering Sea.
give it an, another minute here and we'll get going. Just want to let make sure it had time to get out to everybody. And that everybody's got time to get snacks, drinks. Hi, Pit Fiend. All right, let's go and get started. Welcome, everybody. I'm Kushan Gaming, and today I'm going to be playing Command Modern Operations, as you've probably picked up from the start screen here. Going to be playing the Duelist scenario today, or Duelist 1989. The year is 1989. The Soviet political strategy of the Soviet political strategy of bankrupting and breaking up the NATO alliance has been successful. America is pulled back, back into isolationism, focusing on its domestic woes, while Scandinavian and European nations rekindle pre-World War II rivalries. The United Kingdom and West Germany now stand alone against the Great Red Threat. The Soviets move first by challenging Britain's mastery of the seas. So it's a two-day-long scenario. Soviet Northern Fleet forces continue to sortie strong. Soviet Northern Fleet forces continue to sort to sortie strong naval forces down through the GI UK gap, threatening our com our command of the waters around the British Isles themselves. We must answer each incursion, each incursion with strength. Command has detected a large CVHG group centered on the helicopter cruiser Kiev and a Slava class missile cruiser making its way around the North Cape. Enemy forces expect strong Soviet opposition. The known service threat is the CV CVHG centered on Kiev and composed of a Slava class CG, two Sovereign Minis, and two Udala class destroyers. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to play from the Soviets this time. Let's change things up a little bit. I was going to play from the. I was thinking about playing it from the U from the USSR, and I almost went down the wrong path. So, Kimonen would like to strike a mortal blow. Sorry about that. Command would like to strike a mortal blow to the British fleet by destroying one of their CBHGs. This will initiate a conflict, but we can but we can calculate that their public may not ex expect such a great loss and turn the UK turn on the UK government itself. You must succeed. Yep, we're going to be playing with the Kiev. The threat is considerable. The British have sortied a large CVHG centered on the helicopter carrier Invincible, escorted by Type 42 destroyers and various frigates to meet you. Expect British SSNs and Nimrod MPA aircraft to be screening this group as it proceeds north. Britain still maintains a squadron of maritime strike aircraft in Scotland as well. So they've got the Invincible, Fort Grange, Fort Class, ARE, I think. AR, I don't know what their designation But anyway, they've got a, a supply ship, a Leander, Batch 2. 2TA, Type 21 Exocet, and Type 22 and Type 42 Destroyers of batch, Batches 1, 2, and 1, 2, and 3, respectively. They've got Buccaneer S, S2 Strike Aircraft, Lynx HAS-3, Nimrods, Seer Harriers, Sea Kings, and Shackletons. Trafalgar and Swiftshire class submarines and their radar types. The CVHG in the Norwegian Sea is centered on the Kiev and composed of a Slava class CG, two sovereign minis, two utilities. Large range, long range mar maritime reconnaissance aircraft will fly missions from land bases, backfire naval bombers at Olengorsk on the Kola, on the Kola Peninsula, stand ready to support the operation. And this is really why I wanted to play as the USSR, is I actually want to do command the backfire raid and not have to defend against the backfire raid for once. So we've got the Kiev, the Slava, the Marshal Ustinov, and then our Udalois Sovereign Minis. I'm not going to go over each of those. Based off of last week, 
you know, the destroyers may not last. Well, based off of last week, our carrier may not last. We have three TU-142 Bear Fs. Some Helix anti-submarine helos on our escorts. Another 12 bears. No, all right, we got a couple more than 12. T-95s, T-142s. T-140, okay. Um, T-16s, looks like we got about 20 of those. 21. I'm not going to go into too much of this because I wonder how much of this is actually going to be available to us. So our uh, mission objective, though, is to destroy the British CVHG that is sortie to meet us. Proceed south with your CVHG. Engage all British units encountered. So rather simple op orders. Aircraft da damage is enabled, which, in my opinion... If you're using CMO, it should just be enabled by default. So our... So we got a Barracuda, a, or I'm sorry, a Sierra 1. Another Sierra 1 and an Oscar 1 class SSN. There is our Kiev group. Leverments. So, what do we actually what do we actually have under our, our command here? And this is what I don't like about some scenario designers is when you put a lot of forces that in the mission briefing, but they're not av actually available to you. So we've got our Tu sixteens and the maritime surveillance role. We got some tankers. Ongors, Kaz, our T22s. Looks like we have six available with AS4 kitchens and some TU16s which aren't available. So we only have a, we only have six back, backfires that are actually available to us. At least there. What is Archangel's Cap? Has nothing down there. And what do we have down here? Some more TU-95s in the maritime surveillance role. And none of the TU-142s. M Mderma has t more TU-142s. I wonder what the difference with the TU-142 and the TU-95 is. Every comrade is happy. <laughs> so first things first here. Let's get two of our TU-16s up. No, don't want TU-16s. We'll hold those back. Actually, one thing I do want to check. is special actions all right we don't have any okay you never know some of those forces that are unavailable could have been available had of a random chance through a special action so i guess the first thing i'll do is go ahead and launch three of our bears individually from down here in volga they've got the farthest to go Order submarines to keep heading generally along their same course tracks. Let's go just above the layer. Go to cruise. Avoid cavitation. Same thing. Just over the layer. Go to cruise. So we'll do a little bit of a sprint down, and then we'll give uh, the Kiev orders. 
just go to cruise and hit play. So no shortcuts through Europe or over Finland, Norway, Sweden, or anything like that. Find them, kill them, good off orders. Yep, pretty much Mike Northern. All right. Uh-oh. That was a little weird. Got some skunks. I'm going to assume for right now, those are probably... Yeah, navigation radars. Those are probably merchants. coming up Off courses around the North Cape and I'll and I will be launching probably some hang on let me get orders for real quick I will be launching some tankers probably to support this group We'll spread them out. I'll fine tune their courses later. But these things should be able to fly for a good long time. You know, or it's a shame we can't cut through northern Norway. Go look at. I want to look at the AS4s. Don't have any reloads either. Or we have a couple. So we have one reloads on the backfires. They carry two apiece. We have six. And we have 12 in the magazine. So. Bleach Acid, this is Duelist 1983. 1989? I can't remember which one it is. It's Duelist whatever the year is. Duelist 1989, I'm sorry. It's The date is right in front of you, Kushan. This is the USSR versus the UK. Let's go and look at the Kiev group here, see if I want to launch anything now. Uh, I got some maritime surveillance in the Helix. I'll hold off on those for right now. Got some more Helix in the ASW roll. Correct. Torpedo, yeah. Some more Helix in the ASW roll. In fact, we only have Helos. <clears throat> for what for whatever reason I thought the Kiev guess we don't have any Stovall uh, aircraft although if I remember correctly the Soviet version of the Harrier was kind of crap so it's probably a good thing we don't have them, but would have been nice to have some, at least some short range fighters with the Kiev group. Which means our, we're gonna use the Kiev group here as bait. So 
We'll let the Kiev and our submarines hopefully locate the British task force. And then we will strike with the backfires. Which was pretty much always Soviet doctrine. Their long-range naval aviation has always been their primary strike force. That and their submarines. I'm going to keep it only on 5x today. I'm not going to go up to fire speed. As we saw last week, going up to fire speed causes some bad things to happen. Like you lose your carrier before you get a chance to respond. Alright, so submarines are down just above the layer now. It's not a very deep layer. It's only at 98 feet. Yeah, layer is 131 feet to 226 feet. Pretty shallow layer. Maximum depth over here, somewhere between 8 and 10,000 feet. 7,000 feet, 6,000 feet over there. So, pretty deep water. We need to sprint our subs. I really like the shortcut buttons on the top. That's probably my favorite feature. And or one uh, okay, I'll rephrase. One of my favorite UI features. Bears are still climbing. But as they climb up, their fuel efficiency is going up. Start about with 8 hours of flying time and already up to about 12 hours and climbing till their bingo fuel. Yeah, Bleach Hard Simo, in my opinion, is pretty much an improvement over Kamano in every way. And I love Kamano. Just since we have nothing else really to do right now, I'm going to launch one of our Helix. And we're going to go at least fly over all these other contacts. And I'm going to activate sonars on the PF group. I have no problem with uh, active sonar. We give our location away the submarines I don't really care we'll just go confirm that those are merchant vessels and what I'm gonna do I am going to, actually, we're not going to sprint and drift yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go to as deep as possible, and we're going to go to full. Still avoid cavitation. As deep as possible, go to full speed. We're going to do a little bit of manual sprinting drift and drifting here. As deep as possible, go to full. Let these guys sprint for a little bit. I'm pretty sure those are merchants, but might as well confirm that. Yep, yeah, Mike Northern, the hover options when you have multiple units stacked on top on top of each other is great.
Hey Silver Loki. Welcome to the stream. Gonna be a little bit of downtime here while we wait for the bears to get on station. Nothing really to blow up right now. Got a little bit of downtime. In theory, I could probably send my backfires after the radar stations in northern Scotland. But I only have one reload of AS4s. And a whole lot of unavailable forces. And actually what I want what I should probably do is define a circle centered on Kiev. Oh, that was probably a little much. Define a circle centered on Kiev. That didn't work. Define area. Centered on Kiev. There we go. And make reference points. Fixed to the Kiev. And set up a new ASW mission. Is that actually out, gonna be out far enough? Before I assign this, how far out is that? That's about 110 nautical miles, that'll be good. Should be fine. Create new mission. Patrol. ASW. Um, call it area ASW. And actually, I don't want, what I want to do is I don't need to clear the area behind me. So we'll take point, say, 55 through 95, delete those points, and that'll be our ASW mission. And that should cover enough of our flank. And then we'll reselect all those real quick. Validate area, validation is okay. Perfect. Deselect all reference points. Signed a mission, key of ASW. And launch. Grant 3775, this is Duelist 1989. It's the Soviet Union versus the United Kingdom. So the Soviets have managed to basically did to NATO what actually happened in reality to the Soviet Union in that basically the Soviets have bankrupted NATO, NATO broken it up, and so basically the UK and West Germany basically are standing by themselves now. And so the Soviets have been challenging the British control of the sea by sending task forces and naval units down through the GIUK gap and the British have responded.
And actually, these should... I did get that a little bit wrong, and that these should actually be... to rotating. So now they'll rotate in the direction if we turn our task force 90 degrees to the right, we'll then begin clearing the front of the task force. Or we'll stay clearing the ahead of the task force rather than with if with it being fixed, if we were to rotate, it would maintain this half circle basically on the bearing that it is right now. So now we can deselect all the reference points that so we have confirmed a merchant. Looks like a dry bolt carrier. Adjust the flight plan a little bit. Yeah, bleach acid, it works great. I use this quite a bit. I mean, there's no reason to really clear behind your task force. Well, I'll rephrase. Most of the time, there's not a reason to clear behind your task force. Because any sub that's coming up from behind is going to be making a lot of noise. So it should be detectable in theory earlier. So far, anyway, no sign of any British units. Isaiah 262 or 22622. Gonna run the subs for about another 20 minutes and then we'll bring them up to above the layer. And do a little bit of, like I said, we'll do a doing a little manual sprinting and drifting with them. We've got another couple points that popped up. Only navigation radars, so pretty sure all these are civilian, but always better to confirm that. Bears are reaching Cola now. They are at cruise altitude. And they've got about 12 hours until their bingo fuel. They actually have in flight refueling. They do have a fuel probe. So our Midas is. All right, so centerline drogue, wing drogues, okay. So not boom refueling, so we can refuel the bears if needed. And our ASW TU-142. is climbing up to altitude. So nothing to do right now but to just kind of sit back and relax. I think I should have played this in editor mode. Then all these horses could have been under my control. Marsonaut, all the audio is right from the game.
Actually, I'm kind of curious because I haven't heard the... Alright, so music is off, and I do have the game music off. The audio, they enhance the audio quite a bit in CMO. Alright, there's another, looks like a, another commercial dry bolt carrier there. That's a small one, that's a handy max. All right, let's go and bring our subs up, slow down to creep and come up to just over the layer. And go down to creep. And slow down. And we'll run for about 40 minutes over the layer, see if we can detect any hostile subs. Do we have tails? I don't know if the Sierra one has a toad sonar. Oh, we do have toad sonar. Awesome. Okay, so we do have a passive toad array. That's good. So if we're just above the layer, that should mean that it gets streamed down below the layer. Perfect. We got a son of buoy. So the British have M an MPA up. Son of buoy has got plenty of close in ASW if we need it. With all the helix. We'll see if we can if we detect another buoy which which direction it's going. Pixel, well that sounds great. I hope you realize just how hard a large scale multiplayer like that would actually be to arrange. Don't get me wrong, if they add multiplayer, like I will join you in something like that. But that's also organizing a a uh, land party, multi-day land party like that is would be insane. Morning comes up back. I'm pretty sure if we get multiplayer, it's going to be turn-based. But that's just a guess on my part. I'm pretty sure that's what the new buttons along the bottom, the new time advancement buttons on the bottoms were added for. Morning Havoc. Mike Northern, I, I guess the, the part about multiplayer that kind of concerns me is scenario design, and that right now a lot of scenarios are designed for to be played solo, and I worry that either, if you have multiplayer, you either have to design the scenario for multiplayer, or I guess I worry I worry that if you have multiplayer, you either have multiplayer only scenarios or you have to try and balance for both or scenario designers start balancing for multiplayer rather than balancing for single player. I mean, granted, you could just do an MP version and a, and a single player version, but it's, just, it's something I think about. Pixel, that's what I would really like. I would really like co-op potential of multiplayer more than versus. Yeah, 
comes up like, yeah, I remember that with Bulligan's old multiplayer uh, hacked together version. It worked, though. But it really relied a lot on the, like, on the honor system. Okay, that's a skunk. That's definitely a merchant. Okay, we have a second Sona buoy. Looks like it's heading south. Oh, I took it a third one. Third and fourth one, and that'll let us at least plot the track of... of whatever MPA is out here. So I'm... going to change course with our Sierra though and plot us a course a little on a little bit of a dog leg we'll still end up about where we were more merchants but I don't want to knowingly head right into where a maritime patrol aircraft is Zan, that's my guess as we go. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's what the time advance buttons down here at the bottom were added for in Kamana or in CMO. So advance 15 seconds, 1 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm pretty sure that was added to basically set basically the quote-unquote turn length. was well, like the thing about like co-op multiplayer that like intrigues me is something like Shamal where you have US Navy and USAF available in the scenario and then maybe having to have one player perform certain functions to allow the other player you know basically for example say have a USAF you know conduct SEAD and elect and electronic <clears throat> SEAD and then the Navy come in with electronic attack aircraft or vice versa. And actually having to coordinate your strikes. That's the part about co-op multiplayer I kind of find I find really intriguing. I mean, I think a certain amount of of changes would have to be done to how scenarios were designed, but you know, there's no reason that you couldn't do a multiplayer and a single player variant of scenario. Got more skunks over here. Those are interesting in that we're not picking up navigation radars. That's kind of interesting. That's really interesting. Does our MPA here have? I'm not sure why his radar is on. I go back to patrol missions. I'm going to turn off radars. Pretty sure those skunks over there are merchants, but yeah, Marcel, not exactly like forcing players to coordinate. I mean, I just imagine you know a player not conducting a SCAD strike. And then the the other player comes in with with their main strike, and it just gets torn to pieces because the other player didn't really didn't destroy the right targets or something. Uh, Zan, I I don't really agree with that. I've had the game be perfectly stable. 
the thing that the thing is that people that yeah i mean i'm not going to go into that discussion about the people with bugs are the ones that most likely post on forums but i've i've you know i know and i know quite a few other i'm not saying there's not bugs there's definitely been some bugs but i think it's been running fine it's been playable hasn't crashed on me Well, the thing is that the most, that some, yeah, I don't want to go into that discussion about, you know, most people that post on internet forums, bug, you know, are people that have problems. Tertius, this is Duelist 1989. You don't think players can play for this? <laughs> yeah, I don't really agree with that statement. Oh, our Helix is RTB. All right, so pretty sure all those are merchants. Bears are passing the North Cape now. Yeah, I don't want to go in. Let's not go into that discussion, guys. But I'm not saying there hasn't been bugs. There's definitely have have been some bugs, but it's definitely been playable. Got a couple more merchants. Merchant, merchant. That's probably another merchant. Can't pick up nav radars from those guys now. Those are definitely merchant vessels. Perfect. Bears have another 10 hours. And I think we've been up above the layer for long enough now with the subs. Let's go down deep and go back to full. Skyflies, I see in gauntlets. Why couldn't we have a cure off? Oh. Do you have some SS twelve SS dash N twelve sandbox missiles? This going over what the Kiev group has for striking potential here. Got some SS-N14 Silex missiles and 16 SS-N-22 Sunburns. Yeah, the price, the price is due to the fact that it's a very, very niche market. He can start turning around now. Okay, let's start planning out our spread a little bit better here. Let's get him somebody a little bit farther. Ooh. Okay. We have a Nimrod has been detected. Okay. Slow down. Go to go to creep. He's low. That Nimrod's right over us, and he's really close too. Dropped an active Sonob. I'm not gonna risk coming up above the layer right now. We're just gonna go to creep. We're gonna stay down low. 
I don't have anything to strike him, kill the Nimrod with, do I? No, I don't. Slavas. I know this is pointless, but never know. Could have had something in. Well, just gonna have to deal with the Nimrod. I wonder if I could bring him into. No, he'd have to get a lot closer to get into firing range of our Sam's. MR2. Maritime Patrol does have it. Okay, so we have an active buoy right over our our sub. We don't know the depth. We're gonna have a torpedo in the water. They've localized our sub. Okay. Change course. Go to flank. Yep, they've 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 got them. Lots of active buoys. Let's turn away. Try and clear the datum point. Go into flank speed now. Crap. I don't have anything to kill that Nimrod with either. All right. Well, they know where the where the Kiev group is, so might as well light up our radars. There we go. There's the Nimrod. We're heading right for him, actually. So turn. There's got to be another. I got another boat. Couple bogies. Those probably. Yeah, let's go at an oblique angle. Wonder what's dropping those Sona buoys over there. We're not picking up anything on radar, so whatever it is, it must be pretty low. Alright, so... All right, gonna try and clear the datum with uh, with our submarine here. Wonder what that Nimrod's doing. He's turning back north. All right, we're gonna let the our Sierra here run full. At flank speed for a little bit. I don't know what's dropping Sona buoys on them. But. I don't know what's dropping Sona buoys because it's probably over the horizon from the Kiev group. I got nothing to respond with. Why couldn't we have the their, the other carrier, the Kunitstav? And I know I just butchered the pronunciation. The carrier that always catches fire. Why couldn't we have that carrier? Because at least then we could at least have some mix. Not sure who actually has it harder in this scenario. The Brits have to face backfires, but you only have two loads of, of ammo for the backfires. Or the Soviets, who really have no combat air power over or combat air support over their task group.
because it caught fire and wasn't ready for action in this battle. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not far from the truth. Although, I don't know when the Kunistov was actually, was commissioned. Was it commissioned? I don't think it, I think, I thought it was commissioned in 89. Oh, we have a Hilo. Sea King AEW. Okay, so. We got a Sea King around here. That means there's a task group to support the Sea King. So I'm going to change course there. Come up just over the layer, go to creep. We're going to let our other Sierra just keep running as fast as he can. All right, and let's go ahead and turn on the Big Bulge radars on the... on the bears they know where i am there's no reason really at this point to maintain stealth all right big gold raiders are on let's see and nope wrong menu go to sensors radars are on okay actually we're gonna pot a little quite a different course now bogey skunk I wonder if that's the group right there probably not the AW he was over there wonder what those bogeys have got to be fighters, though. There's no way they're not. And they're moving towards our bears. Or you could <laughs> call the ship by its proper name. I'm not even going to try and call it by its proper name, Comsub Pack. There's one thing everybody should rea have realized by me by now is that I can't pronounce f names if I try. All right, so we have a biologic contact. I'm going to go and filter that out. I'm going to go ahead and filter out all the merchant contacts over here. I'm going to filter out all them all these merchant contacts too. Those are filter out. Mark is neutral. Filter out now. Oh, doesn't let you filter at multiple units at a time. That's interesting. Wonder why that wasn't working. All right, we'll go and filter out all the all the merchant contacts. Yep, that is a group of fighters heading right for our bears. that I have no air defense against it. Although, we have tail guns on our bears. So I wonder... All right, we're gonna turn around. We're gonna get a little unorthodox here. Turn off the radar for now. They should keep closing on the bear. Because as we saw last week, I lost a I lost one of my fighters last week to a tail gunner on a Russian bomber. So let's see if I can do the same to whatever the hell these things are. <laughs> yes, Grant, 3775. I am very desperate. <laughs> I don't have any air-to-air. -air. 
so I have to do something. And we got a Shackleton. Airborne AEW aircraft. I'm gonna go ahead and change the course of the bears to be a little bit more westward now, though. Okay, they're closing on bear number three. It's hopefully gonna let so if these guys have the rules engagement, I th oh no, they're turning, they're turning. Crap, they're going after our other bear. Damn it. All right, so let's go ahead and turn. We'll turn away. Wonder what, all right, we got a skunk. If I were smart here, uh, we got another skunk about where I would expect a British surface action group to be. All right, looks like the bogeys have actually turned around. They don't seem to be closing. Radars can go back to being on. Wonder where they went to. All right, Raiders on. All right. I'm pretty sure that that is the British Surface Action Group right there. We've got an ASW Hilo. Yeah, that is most definitely the British Surface Action Group right there. Okay. That's why, if you can, you should really hold in your... Alright, we've probably cleared the datum far, than, far enough on our Sierra. He can come up above the layer, and we can maybe rework his course a little bit. Yep. That looks like that is a naval formation. Escorts along the threat axis. And if I were a betting man, one of those four ships, probably one of these two right there, is the Invincible. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that entire formation as hostile. All right, so. Where are the... First off... I'm going to pause for a second, though. I do want to look at a couple things here. Yep. Seeking HAS right out in front. Okay. Let's go look at our... Check special actions again. Didn't think so, but we're double-checking... What's the range on our backfires? Backfires, two H AS4 kitchens, mod three, Beep. two each, right? Okay, mod threes. I wanted to see if this was actually the nuclear variant of the AS4. It's not, unfortunately. Okay. So. AS4 kitchen to 14, 1,475 nautical miles. Just once the straight line to this task force is about 700. So if we went, say, 300 out that way, another 
300, that's 800. Should have pull. Eh, we're going to want to get in really close, though. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to launch any tankers. I'm probably going to, but I don't think I'm going to launch the tankers to support... Backfires, at least not initially. I may send the tankers up for the return leg. And I'm going to launch three or two groups of three backfires. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put. I know I just said I wasn't going to do this, but I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and put a refueling. Pattern right off the North Cape. I guess I could have just done that with two. So we want a support mission. Aerial refueling. Don't worry about one third rule. Make sure the rate anything assigned to this has radars off. I'm going to assign two of my IL-78 Midas's to this mission, launch individually, and assign to mission AAR. Okay. All right, so the goal here, I think, is going to be to get in close. So the plan will be to bring the backfires up, stick as close to the no-fly zone as possible, and try to come in along the flank. Which is kind of why I changed my mind on the refueling. Because we're going to have to get close and we're going to have to make a little bit of a detour. I'm definitely not going to be coming in on the straight-ahead axis, because that's going to put a lot of escorts able to fire on it. We have a Sono buoy on our Sierra. Crap. Go back deep, go back to flank. Push tactical. Buster 2, Probably negative radar contact. Procedural control only. And we'll order both groups of. Select the other group. Let them form up. Push tactical. Buster 2, Negative radar contact. Procedural control only. Everybody up. Yep. Perfect. Oh no, don't go there. That's too close to the red zone. You know what? I'm actually going to just assign all six of my... I have six IL-78s. IL I'm going to assign all six to this mission. The reason for that is I have six bombers, and that'll leave one tanker per bomber. Probably for the return trip, though. Okay, we'll come in from the side. We definitely know where their surface action group is. Negative radar contact. Well, not surface action group. It's a carrier group. I don't want to directly, definitely don't want to fly right over that formation, so I'm going to redirect the bears a little bit. But I do need to keep it under radar contact. So we'll set up a couple of patrol lines here. We just need to make sure that the ambiguity on those two, or on those bot, or this, you need to make sure that we have basically a radar contact on the group. Otherwise our AS4s aren't going to be able to fire. Looks like probably, those were probably sea harriers. Would not be surprised to see another group launching here shortly. 
Lots of ASW out of this group. Oh, crap. They have Sono buoys right over my sub. That's not good at all. That's really not good. We're probably going to lose the Sierra. I'm not going to be surprised if a torpedo drops and we can't avoid it. Yep. What did I tell you? There's the torpedo. We are engaged defensive. All we can really do is run. Well, it's a 45 knots. We're going at 35. Yeah. No flooding, though. That's good. Do have fire. Did destroy some of our torpedo tubes. Destro damaged our periscope. periscope. Hard clamp got destroyed. Our, sh our tail got destroyed. That's going to hurt us. Torpedo fire control. Four wires got destroyed. Oh. Uh, Yep, there's the other torpedo. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to make it. And definitely in our baffles now. Whatever that did damaged our engines. Yep, there we go. I knew that was going to happen as soon as they located that sub. Probably should have kept on running, to be honest, rather than coming above the layer. But that was my... That was my mistake. What do we have over here? That's the Shackleton. SMC Scar, how did you approach the battle group? Did you did you come around from the side? Did you go straight in at them? You can see I've got all six of my IL-78s up right now and all six of my backfires. They've got only got four hours of refueling. I refuel possible from. Actually, that's what I should do here. Um. I'm gonna make another mission from here. Add a new mission. Support rally. Configure use tankers assigned to specific mission. Minimum number of tankers, minimum number. Of Maximum number of receivers per queue. One. Okay, so what should I think happen? I don't really mess with this tanker planner all that much. So what should happen here is if I tell this, I'm gonna assign these two to the rally mission. Okay, they're assigned. Let's unassign their course and then refuel if possible from from mission AAR it's not really what I wanted to do but okay so hopefully They'll refuel, top off their tanks. So 
So how'd straight how'd going straight at him work out for you? Cheers, muzzle tactic. All right, so our own ASW is now on station. And it's going to begin sanitizing the area ahead of the Kiev. And it looks like we're heading right at each other. Okay. Backfires are now refueling. They're going to go meet up with the other tanker. Perfect. At least try and top off their tanks a little bit. I wonder how many sea carriers they have ready to go. Oh. <laughs> Our bear tried just shot at the Nimrod. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right, I'm just kind of curious. What's he going at? He's going at 200 knots. We're going at 323. We could catch up with him. And let's go ahead and slow down to loiter on our other bears. Kind of triangulated pretty well. Not like they don't know where I'm at. From where we can see average, okay, so weather change, sea state two, moderate precipitation, light clouds, next forecast at 0600 UTC, 04 September 89. So in six hours, we'll get another weather change. It's actually a nice touch. Oh, we didn't shoot at him this time. Let's not get any closer than we have to. Not really worried about the Nimrod. I don't think the Nimrod has a tail gun, so. Where are we refueled? Still refueling. Gotta take a little bit there. Another couple bogeys. That is a strike. All right, we're declaring that group hostile. That's probably from RAF bases in Northern Scotland. Maybe four Harriers on a kind of a dogleg course after they took off from the Invincible as well. But I'm, I think I would have seen them. If that's what that was. What just got shut down? Oh, somebody got a sidewinder. Oh, they shut down my bear. That's a Harrier. And that looks like another strike. 
coming in off off axis and that group right there as well so we do look like we have a strike coming in on the Kiev this could be a short string too I hope not though if we do end up losing the Kiev I'm gonna keep on playing and at least go through with the first raid with the Sea Harrier just attacked my bear. Bear, yeah, bear's on fire. He's down. All right, let's run, 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 run. Yep, those are attack aircraft. Okay, so we actually lost. That was the my ASW bear that I lost. Well, that's kind of crap. Well, I'd rather actually lose that one than I would have rather have lost my one of my other ones that's marking targets for the raid coming in. Signed to the Kiev ASW mission. Okay, are you guys refueled yet? Good enough. That was taking too long. So we're going to come down now right on the border. And then we'll turn in. When we hit... some point, I'm going to have to go down and I'm going to have to lower altitude so they're less likely to see me. Make sure the AAR mission that they are on loiter. Okay, they're on loiter. Good. Oh, got another sidewinder coming in on who? Yep, there's the strike. We have vampires coming in. Right, we have vampires coming in from two different directions. Buccaneers! Alright, all radars in the task group should be lit off at this point anyway. Yep, ECM is up as well. Well, and here we go. See where those missiles end up popping up at again. There we go. Missiles coming in. Looks like they are targeted, probably on... Get him, guys, get him, get him, get him! Go! wonder if those... That's a really bad firing angle. Come on, whittle that screen down, get him! In. Got him! One more strike to deal with. All right. Okay. Got one more strike of Buccaneers, I think, coming in. Sea Harrier is there. I am going to go ahead and pull my bear back a little bit more. And I'm going to 
pull this one back as well. He's probably not going to get away from the Sea Harriers, but it's worth trying anyway. There's the third strike coming in. Oh, come on, guys. That's Sovereign Mini, though. Got it. So we got one missile that may be going wild. I don't know. So the crew of the EM Boyevoy gets the Hero of the Soviet Union medal. Because <clears throat> uh, they just saved the task force. Fired off a lot of Sams to do it, but they saved the task force. So they're all heroes. At least for now, until I lose a ship. <laughs> got no, they're chasing. Looks like they are. Those got more sea harriers up. They're definitely chasing the bear. But as long as they're chasing the bear and not chasing the backfires that are making their way down the coast. So we're going to come in, and I actually may change this a little bit. I may come in, I'm going to try and, if I can, I would really like to come in f at the Royal Navy Task Force from behind. I'm definitely going to be coming on off-axis, but if I can work my way in behind, that's definitely going to be less escorts that's going to have a good shot. And I'm going to focus my fire on those two ships right there. Did I lose? Why is your radar off? You can turn on your radar again. Why aren't you... No, don't have AM con. Turn on your radar. There we go. Oh, they must have done it when they engaged defensive. Run away, run away, run away. Pairs coming in. Definitely not going to get away, but since they are in the rear aspect of the bear, maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, the Shackleton's going to enter the rear. Oh, he's like 20,000 feet. There's no way that's going to hit him. If you guys want to keep chasing my bear, I'm all for letting you do that and not... That's just wearing down the force they're going to have to intercept me with. I mean, they're going 100 knots faster than the bear. They are going to close that dis. They are closing that distance, but a stern chase is a long chase. And eventually, and actually, what I should do, I should actually go. I want. I actually want to slow down because I, what I don't want to have is I don't want to fly out of this out of the Harrier's patrol zone where they're going to intercept and make them turn back. So I'm deliberately going to potentially sacrifice my bear to save, to wear out missiles and aircraft that can potentially intercept me later on. And it looks like they found the K239. All right, go deep and go to flank. Yep, they found him. There's the second active sonar buoy. They've definitely found him. 
There's the missile. Come on, come on, come on. Miss, miss, come on, shoot. Shoot, they're hostile, they're hostile, shoot them. Damn. Uh, all right, well. I kind of squeak, squealed there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to get one of my recon badgers up. So right now, this bear over here is like my most important asset other than my backfires right now. Because it's the only thing that has the British Surface Action Group marked. If he goes down, I'm going to lose my radar con contact. Should be okay because my backfires will have... Backfires will have radar, but that's just, I would rather not turn on their radars unless I really absolutely have to. So we got the Badger coming up now. I actually should push that right there out a little bit. That's a broken course. That should be better though. And we will come in from the flank. I want you guys to go here and then to go to here. Yeah, more fire control, ASW helo. Yeah, they definitely spotted the sub. That's fine. Meanwhile, the K525 has not been seen yet. And is actually not that far out of torpedo range. Granted, have to get that's. Mm, I wonder if we should turn. And he's just creeping along. I'm gonna maybe change the angle a little bit. All right. And we are coming into firing range if I need to with the backfires. So if I have to do a, if I do detect anything coming at them. The really weird th the other thing is, is that there's this is, it's called Duelist because it's essentially the two sides mirror each other. And I know that there's somewhere out here is some British subs. And I'm just, I think I'm just going to leave K525 just to kind of creep along. I could may maybe make a quick dash in to try and get in torpedo range, but. Mm, that may be worth it too. All right, backfires are coming in. Now they are within firing range. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that. No risk, no glory. Let's go down low and go to cruise. All right, and I am going to go in as close as I can. I'm going to be coming in off the flank. Wonder if that's wonder what that is. That's just a trailer. My bet is the Invincible is in the center of the group with a couple of close-in escorts. I'm betting it's one of those two. It could be one of those, but I am going to concentrate my fire. I'm going to go six AS4s at one of the targets and six AS4s at the other one. And I'm going to literally get in as close as I dare. I want as little reaction time as possible for them. 
We are about three hours till we're bingo on fuel. That is going to go down if I have to use afterburner, which I may, especially when we're coming in on the approach. And so far, anyway, I'm not seeing anybody coming at the bear. So hopefully that means they're all rearming right now. There's the Nimrod. There's their two attack birds. I guess in a strange way, they could be on an intercept, but they could also just be RTB. DW Reese, I'm debating on going low with the backfires. Staying up high is better fuel efficiency up high rather than going low. All right, nope, those two Harriers just turned around. They spotted something they're going after. Wonder what they're going after. But they're heading away from me, which is what really matters. That's what matters. Um, anyways, what I was saying is I'm staying up high intentionally with the backfires. It's more fuel efficiency. Going low and fast is going to eat through that. And actually, you know, we are close enough. Let's go down to... What is the firing range of the AS4 anyway? Firing range on the AS4... Let's go and pause. 250 nautical miles max, cruise altitude, 74,000 feet, launch altitude, 33,000 to 46,000 feet, or 3,300 feet to 46,000. And we're at 36. Okay, so we are actually okay to launch now if I need to. Actually, we're about good point in so let's go ahead and turn in and go to military power turn in go to military power and you know here we go and see as soon as I went to military power you can just see my fuel I went from about three hours of fuel time down to an hour and a half And I'm going to shove these AS4s right down the British throats. So we're coming in. So pause it here. So how far out am I? We are about 100 nautical miles out. Go 350 knots at 4,000 feet. Eh, I'm already too close to really dive down. It's not going to do much good at this point. Might as well just stay where I'm at. They don't have time to actually dive down to 4,000. So we'll come in fast when we hit about... 50 nautical miles out, we'll go ahead and fire. So I'm going to hit about there. Well, this isn't quite do or die. We don't have many reloads for the backfires. All right, so let's go and slow this down. This group can go after... Did I not select the turret? Pause it real quick.
expand all your AS4s on them. And this group. can go there and actually I'm gonna run away at military power All right, there's the AS4s going in. They are jammed. We've been able to, there's the CV, all right. So when they lit up their jammers, we were, so I was right. Okay. They are getting some hits. Down one missile. Gonna start getting some SAM launchers here shortly. There's two missiles down. There's three. But those are the ones going after the... Those are the ones going... Those are the decoy group. Come on. Somebody get through. Somebody go. Go, 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 go. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. All right, so we got two hits. And their speed just dropped. Okay. Weapon hit. Has malfunctioned. All right, so I just wanna see, let's go and pause. Weapon damage. Impacted the invincible. Armor penetrated. <clears throat> okay, so we're not gonna actually 100% penetration achieved. Okay, so we have definitely caused damage to the invincible. And as you can see, their speed just dropped to three knots. And hopefully, with some luck, that also just killed their hangar deck. And the backfires are falling back to base now. So far, no pursuit on them, so they can just go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. They can just go B, RTB, RTB as ordered. They can just slow back down now. No, let's try and pres preserve some fuel here. Oh no, they are going to speed up. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, the Invincible's going to three knots. Uh, DW Reese, Northern Scotland already sent a strike at me. And they... We basically shot down all their missiles. And with that, though, what I am going to do is I'm going to turn the Kiev group away. There's no reason to send the Kiev... Um, actually, should I send the Kiev group in? Should I keep sending the Kiev group south? We do have surface-to-surface -surface missiles. We have sandbox missiles and silex and sunburns. Salix have a 300 nautical mile range. So they actually are within range of the, you know what? This time though, I'm, I'm gonna kill the two. I wanna go after the two escorts. Let's launch. I'm gonna launch. We're gonna do this. Okay, eight. That didn't work out. Eight of those. Why aren't we working? Why 
Why is this? Where's, where's the Slava? Okay, allocate eight. Hi. Okay, that's really interesting. It's not. <laughs> no. I don't know why this isn't working right now. Let's let it run for a second. One of the UI elements that I really wish that they still haven't fixed is I really hate how menus reset up to the top. Like you click on a missile, it resets the top. Click again, it resets back to the top. It's like, there's no reason it should be doing that. That's just annoying. Okay, so we've allocated eight missiles there. And that's going after the Sirius. And we want to allocate another eight of our sunburns. Or sandbox, sorry. So I've allocated eight, eight sandbox missiles to the Sirius and eight to whatever DDG that is. See anybody else? Anything else within range? Probably not. Sovereign many, sovereign many. Nope. All right, so let's keep on closing. Might as well. No reason not to. But if we take out those escorts. Jolsey, I am fully expecting at least some of these missiles to get shot down. So I, that's why eight missiles is more than enough to kill it. It's just getting eight missiles actually to the target. DW Reese, the CV is basically stopped. They're going three knots. And the whole task force is slowed down to basically three knots other than the escorts that look like they may be sprint drifting. But they still have a, they, and we're coming in basically from the front of the formation, so most of their missiles should, you know, for SAMs, they should still have quite a bit. Looks like it's on the same course. One thing the game could do better of is when, like, a, you, is when, like, a, the task force lead ship got damaged. I wish there was an option to, that would basically do a 180 on your course for the AI as far as like a mission setup. Eh. Just because the Type 12 can't doesn't mean that their escorts aren't going to be able to, but... Well, there is that too. Same max target. Yeah, I actually forgot about that the max target speed is 600 knots, but oh well. Looks like they do have a couple of sea harriers up. I wonder if they're going to try and get, probably not going to get a shot with sidewinders. And we still got our sub just creeping in off the flank. Yeah, formation's basically stopped at this point. Even the escorts look like they may be circling. Because the Invincible's, Invincible's down now to two nuts. Um, can I retarget? That's center. Um, I don't know if the sunburns. Nope, I don't think the sunburn or the sandbox can actually be retargeted. Oh, they can be retargeted. Okay. 
So let's go and change some of the targets there. And change these guys. The lead of this salvo. Actually, keep going there. Take the last four in this salvo. Go after the DDG on the side. Alright. I actually didn't think the sandbox missiles could be retargeted. That's good to know. Got them a little bit more spread out now, though. Two should be enough for Type 12. It should. Um, actually, let's take the two missiles in front and let's go ahead and retarget them to the Invincible. There we go. They should change course now. She's got a bunch of escorts in really close. The the um, No, the Invisible's got quite a few escorts close in. I mean, they're 1.2 nautical miles away for the close in escorts. Probably don't have enough missiles to... Well, maybe. We'll see. See what happens here. That's probably more than enough for that. Let's go and see if we can kill. Change their course. Nah, uh, somebody's got missiles that are shooting down because the some sandbox that are going for the invincible are getting shot down. Nope, just going up. Oh, he's already. That was a mistake. I targeted that. I tried to retarget that missile last minute. I can't retarget him now. Eh, somebody's got, somebody's shooting them down. Yeah, I, that's one thing I do wish that they, that you could set in a, in a, um, setting. See, they're getting shot down, so somebody's targeting, targeting these. I should have kept my, the salvo together more. I don't think that missile's going to get through either. Yeah. Sorry, Jolzy, I actually wish I would have uh, ignored your advice there. Did get the Type 42, though, but all my other missiles got shut down. So I should have kept the, the missile strike concentrated. Don't think I have anything else. Oh, I still have some sandbox missiles. Go and target four there. there okay two there All right, so we are gonna, I'm gonna try and go after the DDG again with four and the frigate over there with another two. Probably get the frigate, the DDG, I don't know. But yeah, you can see they're all basic, all the, you know, they're basically all stopped. The escorts are just like sprinting and drifting around the carrier now. Peel the onion, peel the onion. You know, DB Reese, that's actually another scenario I need to play on stream again. I love peel the onion. Or peeling the onion. 
Yeah, it's a Type 42. Mission briefing, I think, states uh, Type 24s and Type 42s of all batches. Wonder where this group thinks they're going. It's interesting how the how the bombers took two different courses back to base. They're taking a more sensible route, and I have no idea where this group's going. We're just gonna direct them north. And here comes the second wave. I'd really like to get that Type 42. What I'm really curious of is, is if these two Harriers actually have a base to land at. If they end up circling down here, we'll know why. And all the while, my K525 is still is still making its way in. It's still not quite within range. But actually now with the... And there's no ASW, at least that I'm seeing on this flank. And with the task force stopped, for all intents and purposes anyway, I could probably take out that frigate. On the, or that DDG on the flank. And my other sub looks like he's broken contact. I actually didn't think this K239 was actually going to survive. I thought we I thought we had lost him. So I'm going to go ahead and just slow him down to full speed now. I'm still going to do a little bit of a dog leg. I don't think I have shipwrecks. Nope, I don't have shipwrecks on this group, Jolsey. I just have Sandbox, Silex, and Sunburns. And the Silex and the Sunburns I have to get closer in. Ooh, there we go. We're losing some missiles. There's one. There's two. Oh, on the sub. Um, I will take a look as soon as this missile attack's over with. Man, whatever this type for whatever this frigate is. All right, we got the DDG, and I'm gonna finish off that frigate. Um. Oh, I do have shipwrecks. Um, too deep to launch, you know? I... That's my own fault. I didn't... Forgot... You know, I'm so used to playing with American hardware that when I actually have to play with Soviet hardware, I make stupid... I make weird mistakes like that. Alright. Allocate another... Two. Fire another two at the frigate. Wonder what they just shot down. Oh, must have been the other missile. Well, now that frigate's the alone survivor on the front of the formation. Still creeping in. 
Yeah, I know. It's an Oscar. That should have stood out to me at the beginning of the scenario, but I honestly don't play with Russian Soviet hardware all that much. I'm so used to American subs where, yeah, you have harpoons, but they're not very good. What I am going to... So maybe what I'll do... So come down to creep, come up to periscope depth. Maybe what I'll do is I'll fire a couple of... I'll fire shipwrecks. I'll go for a couple on the DDG. And I'll try and time it to go in with the strike. Well, it's probably not going to be exactly perfectly timed since I'm throwing this together. Um, I'll go after the DDG first with first salvo. And then if this wave of sun sandbox miss then I'll go after, I'll fire a salvo at the FFG. The CV is down to two knots. Really should have turned away, but off to, uh, off to send a, uh, a message to Dimitri about maybe adding that as a mission option or an ROE. Actually, what should happen is if you put a port and you assign a group to a port, then the ship should actually break out of the formation and head back to port. That would be another way, that would be a good, probably a good way to simulate that. Um, DW Reese, yeah, you can probably do it with, uh, with the port mechanic. Although I think with that, though, it would just drop the Invincible from the group and move the group lead to another ship, whereas I don't think you would actually want your carrier traveling by itself. So I don't know if that would be a perfect way to do it. Six shipwrecks going in and missiles away, go back deep. And do a little turn. To at least try and clear the datum point. Go to cruise. Actually you can just go to flank. Yeah, or damage trigger in Lua. That'd be another way to do it. Assign it to a ferry mission back to a base. Or assign it to any ferry, uh, just a ferry mission anywhere. Sandbox missiles are going in on the frigate. This is the third wave I've fired at this frigate. Here we go. Damn it. All right, can I retarget these shipwrecks? The shipwrecks can be retargeted. We'll take two of the shipwrecks, redirect it to the frigate. Uh, 
I don't think any of that wave's actually going to get through to that destroyer. Yeah, no. I don't think any of these are going to get through to the frigate again either, but we'll see. Man, how many waves of missiles do I have to throw to just kill one frigate? Come on! This is kind of getting ridiculous now. You know, the thing is, is that I'm... I'm I'm half, I've been half tempted to report this as a bug, but I don't know if it's actually a bug or if it's just me being annoying. Me just... But it's like every single... Because I was playing... What was I playing? I was playing Lightning Strike the other day, and I was firing tomahawks at Pakistan, and not one of my tomahawks was getting through. And it's like, I'm not sure... And it's like, I'm kind of starting to feel like the air defense values versus cruise missiles of all types are maybe a little too high. And I don't, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but it just feels like air defenses are being way too efficient. Yeah, I'm gonna just saturate both of those now. I've got 18 shipwrecks left, and I'm going to fire 9 at each, and I'm just gonna take them out now. Does K239 does not have shipwrecks? Nope. Didn't think so, but was worth a look. Get close and sink them with your guns. <laughs> All right. I mean, we are almost within torpedo range. Okay, so go back up to periscope depth, go back to creep. Um, I don't think I have anything with offensive jammers. Why do you keep switching your MCON? Oh, no, 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 no. That's my submarine. I thought that was my bear. Oops. Good thing that the submarine is down low, where he couldn't have turned on his radar. Otherwise, that could have been bad. I mean, if I get too close, I'm going to actually be able to fire my sunburn or my sunburns and my Silex missiles as well. And I do, and I do have a reload of. One reload from the backfires. Uh, I don't have any OECM badgers. Yep, they're all maintenance unavailable. Other than a couple of reconnaissance uh, badgers. Yep, yeah, everybody. I only have uh, three badgers in this scenario, and they're all maritime surveillance. Yeah, it's. I was, I think I was saying before you, you got here, Jolzy, I'm a little, I don't want to say, it's not really a, a command thing, but I'm a little annoyed with scenarios that tell you you have all these forces available, and then they're all set to maintenance unavailable. But that's just a personal scenario thing that I do. I don't list uh, units available in my mission briefings that you can't use.
but I understand. I mean, I kind of understand why some scenarios de designers add that, but it's also one of those things if it gives you the impression that you have more assets than you actually do. All right, we are at periscope depth. All right, we are going to allocate nine. shipwrecks to the destroyer nine to them if nine shipwrecks aren't enough to kill my frigate and I'll go back to talking after Missiles are all away. Now, one of the things that I, I wouldn't mind is that if you had all these these units available, but if you made them available through a potentially available through a special action, or if you you know kind of what, what Co like Coiler did with the Black Gold Blitz, you could request additional um, surface to surface missiles in that scenario through a special action, and it was a random chance. So, if you're going to have forces unavailable. That's why I kept checking. I keep checking that menu to see if there's a trigger for that. But just having them there and not usable at all and listed, I, I don't like that. Yeah, bleach acid. That's probably a good point to probably uh, avoid it. But at this point, I'm kind of going for the kill. Nine missiles should be more than enough to kill each of those targets. Come on. Should should start seeing the first part of the saddles get whittled away here shortly. Yeah, I know I've said that several times now. Comes up back. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if not one of these missiles gets shot down. <laughs> of course there's no fire. I saturate them and there's no fire whatsoever. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can at least maybe resalvo these to the CV. Let's see. All right, so three, two at least got resalvoed to the CV. The others may pick up something in their radar seekers. And so far, nothing on. Okay, the that is the what is up with this frigate? Like, come on! Kill it! Kill it! Thank God! Finally! <laughs> All right, and the other shipwrecks actually got retargeted on the escorts too. All right, so we may take out. Let's see, are we gonna get close? Nope. Come on, come on. That's the sea whiz going right there. You can see it firing. Got one of the escorts. Are we gonna get the CV? There. And we took out. We took out the invincible. Whew. We took out the invincible. And all but three ships. <laughs> wow. Whew. Okay. So, uh, lesson learned there. Uh, just fire all the shipwreck missiles in one wave. In retrospect, what I should have done is time... If I would have realized sooner, and I did realize this sooner, but if I would have actually remembered that the Oscar is an SSGN... What I should have done is timed the Oscars missile strike with the Kievs and the backfires, but, you know, and that frigate, that frigate, let's see, I'm going to, I am going to call it here because that is mission success, but let's go ahead and before we call it clear, let's go look at losses and expenditures. So we did get the Fort Grange, 
We got we killed six Buccaneers. The sh Deity Sheffield, the Exeter, Manchester, Sirius, and Boxer. Three links helicopters, one only or four links helicopters, I guess. We killed the Invincible. Six Harry or er, six Harriers on deck, and eleven Sea Kings. Let's see. They expended a hundred and thirteen Sea Darts. 24 Sea Eagles, 56 Sea Wolves. Wow. And what did we expand? We lost one Sierra, one Bear F, and two Bear Ds. We, our major expenditures were 46 SAN 7 Gadflies, 30 Gauntlet Missiles. 24 sandbox mod ones and 24 shipwreck missiles along with it should be i wonder why there should be 12 yep 12 as4 kitchens so one sierra and three bears for the loss of a light carrier that uh there's the win scoring let's go look at scoring Current score is a triumph, 13,050 points. What did we get for, what did we kill, get for destroying the Invincible? Oh, British ship was sunk. No, I was hoping there may, maybe there was a, no. Hmm. Um, I don't think I can point these missiles back at their group. No, once they turn on their seeker heads, you can't redirect them. Which is why the other the other missiles that were going for the destroyer were able to target on retarget on this group because they were within their seeker heads. These ones can't retarget. But with that, guys, thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all enjoyed that. Thanks, huge thanks again to Matrix and Slytherin for letting me take over their uh, Twitch channel. It's been a blast. You have figured out the most secret doctrine. Saturate evil capitalistic AD with all you have on board. <laughs> That's great, SMC. <laughs> Black Acid, Havoc... Joel's D DW Reeves comes up pack. Thank you all for joining me today. Defender in 1971. And uh, with that, guys, Black Acid. Black Acid, I actually do have a YouTube channel. You can find me both here on, when I'm not streaming here on the Slytherin, uh, Slytherin channel, I stream on my own Twitch channel, Kushan Gaming. And I also have a YouTube channel of youtube.com slash Kushan Gaming there as well. Now with that, guys, that's going to be it for me today. And with that, ha and have a great weekend. Yeah, with a K. One second, Black Acid, and I will go ahead and post this into the chat real quick. Hopefully the... There we go. There you go, Black Acid. Me and Havoc both posted. I also posted my YouTube channel in there.